Well, this is one of my favorite subjects to paint, and that's a close focus image, like of a storefront or a group of buildings, where you just sit straight on, you don't have a lot of perspective problems, and the fun thing is, you get into the intimacy and the close-up nature of the subject. If you're always doing panorama, everything's just big shapes. But I love this because you can get into detail, like the detail here in the window. And um, before I start the actual painting, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my drawing. This is a permanent pen, the Stadler Mars Graphic. It's a very high quality pen. And what I like about it is it, it's, it's archival. You don't want to use like Sharpies or some of those pens that are going to disappear in 10 years. This one, I know I've been using it for many, probably 25 years and I, my paintings still have that same dark brown sepia lines. Now one of the most important things when you start doing line work is that you don't do a continuous line. Stop and start and do some little dots and maybe do a double line. Maybe skip a part. Maybe come up from this side. Come around, come down from this side. But the important thing is to not do a continuous line because that's boring. Anything continuous is boring. And then there's kind of two ways to do these wonderful mortar lines. One of them is to simply draw the shape. So let's say you've got a brick here. There's a brick. That's easy. You do another brick. You do another brick. Now this would get boring. If you just drew all the bricks like bricks, it would be very boring. What's really a lot more fun is to start drawing some of the bricks partially. Just indicate the mortar. See now here's the mortar. Little broken lines coming up. Here's some more mortar going up this way. Maybe coming down a couple dots, dashes. Let's pull it over here. Let's skip a spot. So there's two ways to do it. One is the actual shape. The other is to do the mortar itself. And I usually like to do a double line so that you can actually see the mortar. And then down here, it would be nice just to have, again, a little suggestion stagger the mortar. Sometimes you come out to the edge of the paper, other times you start here, come over and touch the edge of the subject. But what you don't want to do is make it perfect. Perfection is very boring. Now it's hard to see, but there's also some um, street lines here. And it, this is the same thing. You know, you get some of the lines of perspective, but again, stop, start, broken lines. Sometimes I'll even add little pebbles that have blown up against the building. And less is more. I know that's kind of a hard concept. But see, that's all you need to indicate that you now have the front entrance there. So let's get started with looking at some of these paintings that I've done. I really love, really, really love this. This is one in France, and it's, um, it's actually more than just a close focus, but it, it's, it is pretty much straight on. And one of the things I love to do is just to sit and take in the world there for a while. Again, I just sat pretty much in the middle, straight on. Wasn't a big job with perspective. Although I did draw a few broken lines leading you into the picture. And uh, this one I decided to paint as a separate entity. You can see it here with the paint on it. Probably the most difficult drawing I ever did was this one where I took two quarter sheets and stacked them. Yeah, that was, that was pretty amazing. I sat on this narrow street and I started out by drawing just the top here, what I saw. And then as I kept going, I kept thinking, well, why don't I just come down and draw the front entrance? So that was probably my biggest challenge. 
Now we're getting into more of an intimate look here. This was in France. We're just getting the front entrance. And what you try to do is like stairs, uh, frame things in with foliage, leave areas that are restful, leave areas that have a lot of detail. It's really very exciting. This was a lovely spot in Bulgaria. Again, trying to frame in the darks around the edge, trying to keep the most interest here in the focal area and the lightest lights leading you up the steps into uh, just a simple doorway. And of course, foliage, you always have to have foliage. That's half the fun. This was a lovely scene in Greece. We call these our uh, twin doors. There was another door next to it and the sun never touched this area. So this was painted actually with uh, how to paint where the sun don't shine. It was fun, you just make up a path of light. But you can see up here a nice reversal. I'm planning to do that in today's lesson too where we have the dark bars against the light background and the light bars against the dark background. This was one of my favorite subjects. This was in Venice. Again, I just walked around the square looking for the cutest little front entrance. And as I sat there, you know, it takes quite a bit of time to draw something like this. People stop by, dogs come in and get into your picture, and it's just kind of fun. It becomes an event. I really enjoyed that. This is a little boucherie over in France. And they, they always are trying to get rid of stuff. So they, they always had these boxes sitting out here. And it, again, made a nice subject. Gave us a little entrance, some cast shadows, and the lovely colors. This is in New Orleans, the Café Beignet. This one isn't completed yet, but again, you can see how fun it is to frame it in with a little foliage, keep your brightest brights, the most interesting, darkest darks, everything happening right there, and just let everything else kind of melt away. And this, this was one of my favorites. This was over in Greece on the island of Crete. We just sat there and um, they had these lovely linens and I thought, you know what, that would make a nice subject. Just just sit, look. I could have looked more straight on, but this happened to be a better spot in the shade. You gotta think about that too. So let's get started. Well, here we are, ready to go. You can see I had a little fun with the pen lines. I often do this. If I've got a little extra time, I start coming in and doing some darks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with wetting my paints. This is my travel palette and my flower palette. I just use one palette. I just love it. And I like the colors all arranged in a circle. And I'm going to start by doing a, a little puddle of cobalt blue and a little puddle of permanent magenta. Now if you want to do, I'm going to what I'm going to do is capture the shadows. Now if you want to capture the shadows as a gray, one of the things you can do is take cobalt blue, just add a little orange to it, which is the complement, and those two colors together will give you a lovely gray. Now I find that's just a little bit flat, I, but you can do that. So it's a choice you can make. I'm going to do mine a little bit brighter using the cobalt and the magenta. And one of the things I want to do is I want to start with these lovely cast shadows over here. And I'm going to try to get them dark enough so that they're kind of, they're done. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit darker. And see how fun this is. You just come in and put in some of those lovely stripes. There's a, a beautiful dark shadow going around the edge here. So we look for all the obvious ones. Another big sh a big shadow is here. You can see this this lovely shadow coming down here. And shadows are hard edges. So don't be afraid we're painting on dry paper and we're going to have hard edges. And this is going to kind of come around here. 
Ah, uh, yes. Now it's going to get a lot darker, but this just, just gives you the confidence. Sometimes what I like to do is to come in and do some of the mortar a little bit. Go outside the mortar lines a little bit. Throw some paint around. Just try to stay free. As free as you can. There's a little tone here. And we're going to need to go, oh, this is, this is exciting. This whole thing here is dark. It's okay if a little of that rolls up. We like that. And then we've got a nice dark over here. This whole alcove coming in here is dark. But you can see it comes down here in a crisp, cuts across here to the corner. And anything sticking out in front, like foliage, of course, you have to paint around that. And this is when you start seeing a little, little perspective. It's kind of cool. You start seeing the depth in your painting. So this is going to go all the way over here. And this is so fun to do on location, I can't tell you, where you're actually sitting outside. Now there's a really nice strong shadow going across here. Hard edge, don't forget the hard edge. The plant is sitting out in front, so we have to paint around it. And this is pretty much in shadow here. I don't want to get too dark because I still want to get some nice light colors in that window. So we'll not get too dark. But it is in shadow. We need to put we need to put shadow there. And then we have some cast shadows from the plants here. There would definitely be a cast shadow here. Maybe even a little cast shadow on the side of the planter. And then I always like just to throw a few little cast shadows into the street. And you can see this gives you like little pebbles. Then I just kind of wet it and let those kind of melt out. So some are pebbles, some are just a little, little bit of a cast shadow. This is pretty much dark up here. And you can go as far as you want with this. I think we probably have enough because a lot of this picture depends on the wonderful lights. So I think what we'll do is we'll give this a minute to dry and then we'll come back and put the warm colors over the top. But I thought I would just show you a second one that I have. I'm also going to make this into a kit. This is a lovely little street scene in Venice. I was just thrilled when I saw it. It had somebody's underwear hanging in the window. It had a little foliage. It had a, some beautiful red curtains. And this is just, I did sell a painting, so I just have a photograph of it here. But you can see how much fun it was. I loved the warm colors. I loved the contrast and the, you know, the greens. It was really fun. So just any subject, just sit straight on and enjoy the intimacy of it all. So we'll give this a second to dry. One of the things that's really, really important is that you don't draw in any of these cast shadows with a pen line. Those should always be done just spontaneously. Just wing them. Because a pen line, it's too much information. It looks so much better just to have a nice clean line. So something very important to keep in mind. Now we're working with complements. So we've got the blues and the magentas. And so now we're going to go into some of the other warm colors. 
And one of the colors that is absolutely perfect for on location painting, especially this is a little place in France in the Tuscany region. It's uh, San Gimignano. Beautiful, beautiful town full of towers. So I'm going to be using some raw sienna, some quin gold, some quinacridone burnt orange, in sticking with all these earthy colors. Now in the old days I would have used burnt sienna. You can still use burnt sienna if you'd like. You can add a little, um, this would be quinacridone coral with gold. And see that gives you a lovely kind of ochre color too. So using a, a blend of some of these colors. I'm going to start with my raw sienna. And the reason I use raw sienna is because it's transparent. It's beautiful. And can you see what happens when I put this color over those shadow areas? I get some gorgeous grays. And that's what it's all about. We're going to develop these beautiful grays. Now there's another color that is available called yellow ochre. And the unfortunate thing about yellow ochre is it's full of white paint. And I really don't want opaque color. I try to layer so that every color underneath, every color you layer over the top, they're all coming through. Now when you're outside on location, it is so cool because what happens is this paint dries so quickly. I mean, we took just a second to kind of run a hair dryer, but out on location, this is so fast. You can see what I'm doing. I'm adding some of this beautiful raw sienna and just leaving some white. Then with just a wet brush, I kind of smear it around, lose those edges. Some are left hard. And you can see what happens. You get this beautiful flickering light and dark. And I think it's really important to do that. And then while this is still wet, what I want to do is I want to take a little color sanding. Now this is this is something you may not want to do this on location but it's so easy I'm actually in a studio. These are watercolor pencils and just taking a 100 grit sandpaper what I can do is just sand a little bit of this watercolor pencil into this wet area. And the cool thing is it gives me these little spots and if you look at these I mean these are full of little spots. So I'm just using the same warm colors. This happens to be a red and an orange. Just having a little fun. Ooh, I like that. So I like the flickering lights and I like the uh, little color sanding. If you want to, you can even smear that color sanding a little bit. But the cool news is, if you just let that dry, it will completely bond with the paper and you can paint over it and you won't have to reactivate those. They just stay the way they are. So now I'm going to add just a little bit of warm color to this. This is my quinacridone burnt orange. Just a little bit warmer and you can see on the picture there it is a little bit oranger and a little bit warmer. So I'm going to come in down here where I see that oranger color. Paint around the subject so it's sticking out into the sun. And then we'll just pull that up. We'll add some yellows. We'll add some oranges. We'll paint right over those blues and purples to get some lovely grays. Might even add a little bit of this lovely orange I mixed up. Oh, I like that. So there you go. We've got a nice start now. So there's kind of our background. Now it's time to start layering some color right on top of these other colors. So here you can see I'm going to take a little quinacridone burnt orange and lay it right down in front of this foliage. And I'm going to um, mix a much darker value of this now because these doors are dark. So this is straight quinacridone burnt orange. 
painted right over the blue. You can see where it now here where it's coming out into the light. Isn't that cool? You can see, you can see that beautiful cast shadow. And that's what this is all about. You capture the shadow in one layer, then you come back and you capture the warm color in another layer. To me, this is the perfect way to paint. Really fun. So now we're starting to capture just a little bit of that gorgeous door. Let's put a little more warm color on there. I'm adding a little Scarlet Lake and a little Windsor Orange. And it's, ne it's necessary to do this over here too. So we'll just take a minute, come in, paint that beautiful, just straight orange right over the blue. Saving the lights around the window. And whatever you do, don't forget to save the foliage so it's sticking out into the light. Senor, senor, carave le solta. Mille torreros, beve soltatra. Pur plaisir, pur plaisir, is all they come back. Le cirque est plein ce jour de fête. Le cirque est plein. So now we basically have the doors down. And we're going to get a lot darker in here. So I think I will leave these somewhat light. And now I'm kind of excited about doing some darks. So I'm going to take some Conacridone Burnt Orange. And I'm going to take the Complement, Cobalt Blue. And see, that's going to give me this beautiful dark. And it's time to come in here and get some nice darks going. So this is a mixed color. And from now on, I'm probably going to come up with all kinds of mixed colors. This one here, I'm going to add a little more of the orange to it. Leave a little bit of the brown in it. Make it just a little bit darker than the doors. And the real fun is going to come now when we start throwing around some paint in the windows and some of those flowers. So right now I'm just trying to capture some of the light and dark patterns you see. Okay, so now I'm, I'm ready to have a little fun with this grid work up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and paint the darks as leaving the light of the iron grid. But I'm only going to go so far. And then I'm going to reverse it. And this is a very fun thing to do. I try to do it every opportunity, even if it, see it doesn't show this in the photograph. But this is artistic liberty. You can just play. That's what's fun about doing this kind of painting, is you can just have some fun playing. So right about in here now, I'm going to do about halfway. And then I'm going to wet my brush, shake it out. I'm going to come in at right angles and lose that edge into a light. And now at this point, I'm going to take and paint 
the bar is dark. And we still have to do a little transitioning there, but it'll work out. It's kind of cool the way this works. So again, this is just a mixture of quinacridone burnt orange, cobalt blue, gives me this lovely brown. And I'll probably end up going a little darker later. Now again, I need to wet my brush and I need to come in. But I need to wait for that to dry just a little bit, but I'm going to rush it there. So now you can see we have light against dark, dark against light. And I think that's a very, very fun thing to do. Certainly adds a lot more interest. And now we're ready to start thinking about some of the darks that you see in the windows. And what I like to do is start with broken shapes. Don't try to paint exactly what you see. Just have a little fun here. Paint in some of the dark, dark shadows. Capture a few hard edges. There's little signs all over. I love that. And then we can wet our brush and do a few soft edges here. Not too many, just a few. I always love lost and found. And then we want to come in and just throw in some color. Let's throw some red in there. In fact, let's warm this up with a little red. Almost like there's a beautiful light back there. When we paint over this, we'll get a little glow. So windows are reflections. Windows are fun. Just, just enjoy the windows. Don't try to get too perfect. You gotta have a little light too. This is some gold. It's like turning on the lights. I always have to have a little gold in my windows. It's such a nice bright color. So see already, just having a little fun there. Now when you put the gold over the purple, look at the lovely gray we get. And now it's time to think about some flowers. And again, one of the ways I like to do flowers is to simply take, load up my brush, and just tap it like this. And it's going in my windows, that's okay too, we like that. So I'm just going to throw some some of this lovely red and develop a few red flowers here. Throw a little red up into my and one of the one of the things that's really important now is to reflect some of these lovely warm colors down here on the sidewalk. So I'm going to go back first of all to my cobalt blue and I'm going to throw some more of that paint. And I'm throwing it in the direction of the sidewalk. So it's just a bunch of little, little spots like that. It's kind of cool. And if I didn't want them there, eh, we'll just soften them out. So some of these I want to soften. Maybe pull a dark shape right off the edge there. Maybe pull a dark shape off here, leave it lighter here. And then I want to take this lovely raw sienna and throw that in. And a little gold, especially coming down here, almost like a reflection. Because the picture itself is pretty blah. We need to we need to do a little color interpretation here. Pull some of those warm colors into the sidewalk. 
maybe even a little pure quinacridone burnt orange. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that feels good. A little more nice bright red flowers. Now when those red flowers dry, then what I like to do is come in and do the, the greens. And I usually start the green with the yellow and then come in with a little Antwerp blue to get some of those lovely greens. So I can't go too far on the greens right now, but I can just give you a little, just a little taste of the color there. You can see how important it is. Maybe throw a little green up there. <laughs> and there really isn't any color on this. So again, let's just put a little color. So don't be afraid to do color interpretation every chance you get. And then the very last thing you want to do is to come in with your very strong darks. So now if I take some quinacridone burnt orange and some French ultramarine blue, which is a much darker blue than cobalt, I can go all the way to black. And black is going to be some of the final color that I need to add to really pop out these windows maybe to add a little dark frame around this to add the darks up in here on this lovely little light so you want to get a full range of values, all the way from a 9 to the white of the paper. And I think these bars need to be darker. I'll probably suggest some light coming through there when the paint dries. I can paint right over the top of this and get some nice ooh glow of light coming through. And we'll put some more darks down here. So really, all I have left to do now are some of the fun things. The um, playing with the windows. I love that. Playing with windows, one of my very favorite. And then coming in and doing just a little bit more with the mortar. Doing a little more. We could do some. Uh, the flower pots could be kind of a golden orangey color. So anything to add some color is important. Oops, I don't want to get, that's too close to the, we'll make this one a golden orangey color. We'll leave those light. And you can see what happens every time you paint over your shadows, you get those lovely grays. So there we go. Well, I hope you have fun with this. The whole idea is to do color interpretation, have fun, and just enjoy the process. And remember, push the color. Don't, don't keep it too ordinary. Push the color. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Please check out our online store at carlinholman.com to find all the supplies that you saw here today, as well as our specials, upcoming workshops, and much more. I'm Carlin Holman, bidding you farewell. Thank you for watching.